The Extra Funny Podcast is brought to you by Neogenics. Neogenics is the most trusted stem cell clinic in the Carolinas. Heal joint pain naturally by medical doctors with no surgery, no downtime, and no medications. Find out more at htj.com slash neogenics. As a proven leader in managed IT services, CompuCom delivers innovative solutions designed for how you work today. They'll help you deliver results no matter where you are on your digital transformation journey. It's all at CompuCom. Go to CompuCom.com to find out more. Welcome to TJ's podcast. Hello, TJ Fanaticos. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I don't have to say welcome because the big voice guy already said it. So why am I saying it again? Because I'm stupid, stupid, stupid. Dang. (laughs) Um... Riggins, uh, I was just I was just telling Riggins that uh, I try to get our friend Cubby to be on today, but he couldn't do it. He had uh, you know he busy. He got he's got other stuff coming on, but I wanted to bring him on to to tell him. I, I thought of a celebrity that I want to have as an interview and find out if he could get the information to get the guy the guy on. But I guess I could have told him that in a text rather than have him on and tell him. Yeah. So he could still. You know, I could still communicate with him, and maybe maybe he could, he would have time to reach out. But I want to talk to that Mr. Beast. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I haven't seen a lot of his his stuff. Mr. Beast is a YouTube star. He's he's one of the most successful uh, social media influencer people in history of social media, and um, he uses a lot of his money, most all of his money, for uh, fun things. He doesn't he doesn't mess with people. There's nothing controversial about it. Um, he just, he just does fun things. Uh, and he lives in North Carolina where we live. And I'm assuming that he is, he grew up a fan of the Ace and TJ show because he's from the Bob 93, three area. So we've been on there on the radio for a long time. And anybody who's anybody listens to the Ace and TJ show religiously on Bob 93, three. So yeah, I would be interested in talking to him. Yeah, so what is the Cubby connection? Because Cubby is so good at tracking down celebrities and making contact with them. You know, he's got all those, like he's invited to Jennifer Lopez's white party that time when he said, what do you think about big people in white pants? I mean, that's, he was (laughs) going to her birthday party or something. Yeah. So he's always full of that kind of stuff. He loves celebrities. Yeah. And it doesn't even matter whether he likes their work or what he thinks of them personally. If they're famous, he wants to meet him and have his picture taken with him. He yeah. wants a connection to him. And the celebrities seem to really like enjoy being around him. Yeah. I mean, what's not to enjoy? He's, yeah. He's humble and fun and funny and, you know, lovable. He's lovable. Yes. Very my mom, lovable. My mom loves Cubby. Yeah. It, it, even she'll bring him up all the time. Have you talked to Cubby? I go, not really. <laughs> <laughs> How's he doing? But, and then I mentioned that to Cubby one time, and now every time I see him, he's like, how's your mom doing? He's yeah. like real sweet like that. Mm-hmm. And I know that he, he's going through some things, like his dad's sick and, and all, and, and um, one of the things that Cubby loves the most in life is going to eat with somebody. Yeah. You know, whether whether it's dinner, whether it's lunch, whatever. And um, And I don't think he's had time for a lot of that. So... I guess I could take him food, like like yeah. a, uh, like a, what do you call it? The, what, the we, meal on meals on wheels, meals on wheels. thing. <laughs> but he's lost all that weight. He's been dieting for so long. Do you think it, it's a? Um, there's a chance he could lose a, a comedy step from losing all that weight. Will I think, he? I think every celebrity that when they do that, that that's always the question: Are they mm-hmm. still going to be the same? They've done it with especially comedians specifically, yeah. or comedic actors well that's one of the things that uh caused chris farley to kill himself because he knew he, he yeah he didn't he didn't like being fat he was always ashamed and got made fun of but he turned it into comedy yeah. and then he would say i'm just the funny fat guy and if i wasn't fat nobody would like me because i wouldn't be funny anymore and yeah. uh, and all of that kind of stuff now, i'm not saying cubby's gonna be like that no and it's a good move overall. I mean, you can't argue with that. I mean, it's good to be... What, lose weight? Yeah, yeah. Eh, jury's still out on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah because the, uh, Mike from Mike and Molly is not nearly as funny on Bob Loves Abishola, Bob Hart's Abishola, since he got skinny. He's an Ozempian. 
Is that the same guy? Yeah. You didn't know that was no. the same dude? Uh-huh. Is this Billy something? What is, what is, I don't know his name. Billy Gardells. Billy Gardells. But he lost so much weight, he's now one Gardell. Not- <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know whether he's funny on Bab Hearts Abishola or not, because I've never seen one minute of it, because yeah. it didn't look like something that would be funny. Yeah, I got a feeling Bob Loves Abishola was still pretty unfunny when he was fat, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, he's he's one of the first Ozempians. He, he's been doing the commercials for a long time because of his diabetes. Yeah, he's good. That was before they made it, you know, where people started taking it just to lose weight. He was using it for diabetes. Mm-hmm. But they talk about all this, the side effects of Ozempian and those types of drugs. Do the side effects not hit people who are using it for diabetes? It's only when they're using it to lose weight. That, oh, I don't know that. Like the stomach cramping. and the, Yeah. The, and, and what was numbness. that one thing we heard about that day? It was uh, like constant diarrhea or something yeah, that somebody I mean, was experiencing a lot of that they all seem to revolve around gut health yeah i have no symptoms R- R- rob you have you say you have no symptoms yeah, nothing, nothing wrong with me using it. okay rob uses it oh we gotta but, rob him like rob rob i want it I oh wanna try, I, <laughs> you have it i didn't i, I kind of forgot that yeah and it's uh you take it for um uh, what do they call it? Pre-diabetes or something? Yeah. Yeah. But anybody who doesn't have diabetes is pre-diabetic. Technically. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody who doesn't have cancer is pre-cancerous. Yeah. Would you sell us some? No, I mean, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, it costs a lot. Um, but I don't know if it doesn't affect people. I mean, were, before they started using it as a weight loss drug, was, were the people taking it for diabetes having these same reported side effects? I wonder. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. But I've got diarrhea all the time anyway. That yeah, what do you care? I don't care. But does it hurt, though? Does your stomach cramp and then you have diarrhea, or you no. just have diarrhea? You just have, you know, loose stool? Yeah, yeah. I I would not refer to it as loose stool. <laughs> That's how I that's call it with my dog. Is. With my dog. It's it just loose stool. Because that's the difference in diarrhea and loose stool, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably more loose stool. Yeah, How loose are we talking? Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't know about your stool. <laughs> um, so yesterday was um, Bible study day for my wife. She has a group of uh, women that get together every Tuesday, and it's for a couple hours they do a, a Bible study uh, in one of them's house, which is great. I mean, my wife grew up Methodist, and her parents always took her to church, but there wasn't a whole lot. Of, like, if you're a, a little kid going to a Baptist church like I did, a Southern Baptist church, you have Bible studies and Bible school and all of that kind of stuff. But she didn't learn all that growing up, you know, because I guess in the Methodist church where she went, or in, well, in Methodist in general, I don't think really have a lot of focus on learning the Bible the way others do. I know Catholics do too. Yeah. Learn in the Bible. So this is a good thing that she's, that she's doing, but she came in yesterday and she had her phone and she goes, I want to play something for you that, um, that we ha- had at Bible study and it was a video and I could hear her trying to get to the part and it would play. And I'm like, and I'm focused on something else and I'm kind of hearing it out, out of one ear and the, she's in the kitchen trying to find it. I'm like, what is she doing? She goes, okay, here it is. And she comes over and sits down and turns her volume of her phone up and starts playing a clip from Joe Rogan's podcast. And it's Joe Rogan and Kid Rock. And they're, you know, they're cussing. And and I, I know I heard one of them mention something about the, the beer that they were drinking at the time. And uh, it sounded like two guys who've been smoking weed uh philosophizing to each other and laughing and having and i'm like what does this have to do with the bible study and what it was is that they got into a discussion about jesus and uh kid rock was uh was talking about jesus being real and jesus in his life and 
you know, all of this stuff. And Joe Rogan was kind of condescending back to him about Jesus not being real. I want to I want to be, believe he's real for your sake, you know, that kind of thing. So that they they used Kid Rock on the Joe Rogan experience as part of their Bible lesson. <laughs> They're just sitting around. The <laughs> and the clip was about five, six minutes long. And I mean, they're just cussing, and then you can hear. I, I don't know if they had been smoking weed before this, but it just—it's what it reminded Sounds me of. Like two it. two old boys just sitting around high, you know, talking about the Lord, man. <laughs> I mean, but it was really because I mean, the point was is that Kid Rock, you know, didn't back down, and you know, Joe Rogan would say, "I mean, if Jesus is real, and then he'd go, he is, yeah, he is." <laughs> but I just picture these. Women in their 50s sitting around, you know, just glued to Joe Rogan experience. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is effing this, effing that. <laughs> yeah. He's making some good points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, without all the ugly talk. Yeah. Now, I know there's a lot of ugly talk, but, I mean, he is he's sticking to his guns. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have flown in your church growing up. Oh, no. No, 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 no. no. Which is funny. Yesterday, I heard somebody on the internet say Methodists think they're better. Methodists think they're better than Baptists and Southern Baptists. Is that true? Yeah. Just kind of, yeah. Yeah, I've because the, because the Methodist is not a strict religion. It's like a, a really moderate to liberal leaning faith, especially more over the past you know few years. And a, and a lot of them have split. A lot of these churches have split because of it. And they're, they're not under the United Methodist flag anymore. Okay. Um. But, you know, Southern Baptist is, you know, the King James version of the Bible. And a true Southern Baptist church is not going to have a bunch of guitars and drums and all of that kind Ooh, of stuff. You got a, an organ and a piano, and that is it. Yeah. Um, but it's more strict. Like the Southern Baptist is more strict. You know, I always say that about uh, Methodists. Is, it's like anything's good in moderation. Yeah. Uh, or okay in moderation. And sometimes that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, you know, you don't, you don't want that. And I don't go to the Methodist church anymore. Oh, you're done with that totally? Mm-hmm. Really? Yep. So how do you identify? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? Uh, I don't know because I don't want to tell people I'm non-denominational because that just, that's like holding up a liberal flag, <laughs> you know? But that's the kind of church we've been going to. Mm-hmm. And the guy, actually what we get more out of is uh we go to church we've been we've been going to this church but we also watch this um this preacher out of virginia in the washington dc area and he runs a non-denominational church and both of these churches the one i go to physically and the one we watch online and that's where jody gets her bible study lessons from and all that he does that through the week um oddly enough it's the senior pastor, and then the uh, other pastors are his sons. Son, yeah, I was going to say yeah, both, sons. Both cases. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like the righteous gemstones. Yeah. But the one in uh, Virginia that we watch is a is church is called Cornerstone Chapel, and um, the, the preacher's name is uh, Gary Hamrick, Brother Gary Hamrick, and he's very conservative. Not, not in, you know, the... You know, don't don't come in here wearing um, dungarees, women, you know, like that conservative politically. Mm-hmm. You know, wow. so I like it. I like a him. Yeah. But the Methodist. You know, I, I always say that I grew up Southern Baptist. My wife grew up Methodist and we got married. We compromised and I became Methodist. <laughs> um, and it was it was good for a long time. And there are some really good. Uh, Methodist uh, preachers and, and all of that. But I mean, there's just been a, you know, where some of them wanted to go a little too liberal yeah. for my taste, Did which you? is liberal at all. <laughs> it's too much for my taste. Does your mom freak out when she found out you were going to become a Methodist? She didn't freak out, but um, you know, the main thing that a Southern Baptist is going to say when, a, when somebody says they're not going to be going to a Baptist church, they're going to go to a Methodist church. The first thing they say is, Oh, well, they drink, don't they? They're like Catholics. They believe in drinking. <laughs> That's what she said. Down. Yep. Yeah. Now. I get it, though. Right. And I, I know my mom doesn't agree because she's like full-fledged. If she's if she's not going to a Baptist church, she's going to a um, 
uh, you know, her her uh, parents were Church of God, yeah, which is a, a branch of Pentecostal church. So uh, she doesn't she doesn't go to that that kind of church, but she was raised that you know that strict. So yeah, when they had the clown ministry day at the Methodist church, I was you know sitting there going, "I'm glad my mama's not here." Oh my gosh, clowns! Yeah, it was fine. I mean, it was just, you know, clown clown ministry they call it. And then the one day when the intern that they had um, at the at church we used to go to, um, he was an intern and he was um, Hispanic, and. For some reason, they said uh, he has to give a sermon. Part of his he has to preach sometimes. Part of his internship, um, they put him up there to preach, and he did the whole sermon in Spanish. What? Yeah. And how many people were speak the new Spanish in the crowd? Uh, maybe his wife. Yeah. Maybe that was it. So all of the church had to sit there while he's preaching in Spanish, not knowing a word of what he's saying, and try not to make a face. Yeah, and. But meanwhile, the preacher and the people, uh, you know, run the church felt like, you know, they just gained moral authority. Because yeah. look what I did. Look at this. I gave him a platform and let him speak in his native tongue. And I'm bringing all of these other people into his culture for him. Meanwhile, they got dressed up for nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day. What are you getting out of that? Yeah, if you, I, if you don't speak Spanish and somebody's preaching to you in Spanish, you're not getting anything out of that. Yeah. I mean, you could have gone got breakfast at the Cracker Barrel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not getting a thing out of that. Yeah. Yeah, there were some people upset by that. Yeah. They were pissed. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, we have a crime story, a, a murder uh, of a celebrity that has taken over the internets and the uh, true crime world. (gasps) So we're going to get into that next. Hang on. TJ's podcast. The extra funny podcast is brought to you by Neogenics. Neogenics is the most trusted stem cell clinic in the Carolinas. He'll join pain naturally by medical doctors with no surgery, no downtime and no medications. Find out more at acetj.com slash neogenics. As a proven leader in managed IT services, CompuCom delivers innovative solutions designed for how you work today. They'll help you deliver results no matter where you are on your digital transformation journey. It's all at CompuCom. Go to CompuCom.com to find out more. Your New Year's resolution is in full swing and you are trying to lose weight. Help yourself with Calitrin. Calitrin is the safe, effective way to lose weight. When you buy three months supply right now, you'll get three months free. It's scientifically proven to help you lose weight. Order it now at acetj.com slash weight loss. Calitrin. Back to TJ's podcast. Just got an alert, Regan. Pope Francis taken to the hospital in Rome after suffering from the flu. Yeah, he's been sick a lot lately. Do you say the flu or flu? Sick with the flu. Yeah. What did they say? Sick with flu? Flu. And I think doctors say flu instead of the flu. Well, I guess Because you wouldn't say the influenza. Right, exactly. That's like saying the cancer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when people say he's in, he's in uh, you know, went to the doctor, found out he's got the cancer. Yeah. I might start using influenza, though. It sounds more oh, yeah. serious to get out of stuff. Right. He's got influenza. Oh, mm-hmm. my gosh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. he's been sick a lot lately. How old is he? He's like 80-something. Yeah, 80-something. Mm-hmm. But he's got, you know, I think he had a hip replaced not too long ago, and he's just, he's kind of been, he's just, you know. Why does he got to have a hip replaced? He, does he even walk anywhere? Yeah. He does? Yeah. He, I think he prefers he, to walk. But, I mean, he's in 5Ks <laughs> and stuff like that on the weekend. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's not out there doing <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you're seeing him on the stair mast stair mill at the gym or anything. <laughs> True. But I bet they do have a nice workout facility. Yeah. At the uh what do you call it? The Vatican. The Vatican. Yeah. They got gardens and a lot of a lot of green space and he like, loves that. Like tomatoes. Yeah. Peas. Oh, sure. Purple hull peas. Yeah. All that. Herbs and stuff. That was one of the th- if you there was this movie out on Netflix called The Two Popes. And it showed the relationship between Pope Francis and Pope yeah. Benedict. Right. Now, Pope Benedict was super conservative. Guy. Awesome. He was the guy that was like uh, John Paul II's like right hand mm-hmm. man. 
And he did not, the way they portray the relationship, he was looking at this guy like a hippie yeah, freak. And because he is. <laughs> he, uh, Pope Francis went and clipped um, some oregano out of the herb garden. And Pope Benedict, he like unravels it in a paper towel. And Anthony Hopkins, who plays Pope Benedict, he's like, what is that? And he's like, it's herbs. Your gardener gave them to me. <laughs> Pope Benedict is looking at him like, dude. And he, <laughs> now, that was a, a lot of it was fictionalized, but yeah. it gave a pretty good idea of kind of how their personalities are. Right. But Benedict was a good one. And yeah, Francis was. is not a good one. <laughs> they definitely represent two different sides of the Catholic yeah. Church, for sure. Right. Now I'm not Catholic, so I don't. I'm I'm sure that I'm being offensive by commenting in that manner. But no, uh, world one figures. of them, yeah, one of them, um, one of them was right, and the other one's a Marxist. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, one of the things about this podcast. Well, by the way, make sure you check out Ace's podcast later today. That goes up at around uh, at three o'clock on our app and and all of that stuff. Um, but one thing that this podcast will allow us to do is uh, get into more stories like this because it's all about things that I find interesting because I'm a narcissist, obviously, <laughs> and everything has to be about what I like. Uh, so uh, there is a, a, a big story out of Australia because um, – there is a celebrity there. What is his name? Jesse Baird? Yeah, I think so. Well, Jesse Baird um, is, uh, is a gay, and so is uh, his boyfriend, Luke Davies, which would make sense. You know, there's a, um, there's a guy that I listen to um, who's a political commentator. His name's Dave Rubin, and he always says, I don't have anything against gay people. My husband is gay. You get it? Yeah. Because he's gay. He's got a husband. And so that's what I'm saying. So this guy's boyfriend was gay, too. Yeah. But uh, they were found in uh, these body bags, like surfer bag, a surfer bag, murked. They've been killed. And there's an update because they say that the, um, that the suspected murderer is a 28-year-old police officer named Beaumont Lamar Condon. And he used to date Baird. So now they're yeah. saying that it was a jealous uh, rage, which, by the way, the most dangerous emotions that cause the most crimes. Number two is greed. And number uh, one is jealousy. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Not that greed's an emotion, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, they said, we're very confident that we have located Luke and Jesse. Were they in the same bag? I think multiple bags. Okay. Because they were surfer bags. Uh, yeah. I don't know what that is because I, I don't surf. Yeah. I, I pictured it being big enough to hold some kind of board, but obviously yeah. you don't carry a surfboard in a bag. They just called them surf bags. Okay. So maybe duffel bag. Yeah, maybe. That's a big. Yeah. It's a big. So again, this is a Australian language. So yeah. We're having to, you know, decipher it. Um, and it says the police commissioner, wait, this has to be a misprint, Karen Webb. <laughs> no, it's true. There ain't no women police commissioners. <laughs> Try again. You can do better. Uh, she said, we're very confident that we have located Luke and Jesse. This information did not come with the assistance of the accused for which we are very grateful. And I'm sure the families are very grateful. It did come with the assistance. So, yeah, he meaning he, I t he told them where the bodies were and that that's actually the, So, they must have been decomposed or, or disfigured so much that they wouldn't be sure just by looking at them yeah. if that's who they were. And I think they were able to locate them because the guy started talking once he secured yeah. a lawyer, I think. Yeah. Which is odd. Well, the lawyer probably said, um, you know, we need to tell them what, what they want to know. Because they may be getting some kind of plea deal out of it. Yeah, not yeah, go to, yeah. We don't need to go to court. That's the way it would be in America, probably. Yeah. Um, if you know that there's so much evidence already, right? then you're going to try to strike a deal. And what I don't understand is why so many people that you see in these crime shows and in movies and everything, why so many people fight for life in prison 
rather than go to trial and possibly get the death penalty. Mm -hmm. Would you want to die or would you want to spend the rest of your life in prison? That's tough. I, I, the, the right answer is, I guess you don't, you shouldn't want to die. That's not you. you, Every human life is able to kind of rebound, I guess. I don't know. I haven't thought about it that deeply until just now. So I would say, I'll do a plea. But I'll, I want the death penalty, and I just want you to wait a few months until I until you do it. I don't you don't have to draw it out in appeals and all of that stuff. Yeah, because I want to have time to make sure I'm right with the Lord before right. before I, I go into the to the chamber. But I wouldn't want to. Live, it's this like life in prison without the possibility of parole. Which, by the way, I don't think that should be a sentence either. If you're so bad that we can never trust you in society again, they should just go ahead and kill you. Hmm. But, I mean, I, I follow the WWJD rule. Wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> what would he do? Yeah. Did you hear how they kind of track the guy down? Do you Do you have any of the – it's um, kind of crazy. No, I, I have the story here, but okay. what, what are you talking about specifically? They, they – that the guy that they say killed the the ex boyfriend and the new lover, he had used a gun. Oh yeah, that he then they like did a ballistic test on it mm-hmm. and they found out that it was it came back to a gun that he had then registered at his own because he was a police officer. Yeah, at he had checked the gun back into the station. I guess they right. Can't he take- checked it out uh, when he was off duty. Yeah, he went in and somehow managed to check the gun out. And they gave it to him, and then he checked it back in. Because Australia has those like strict mm-hmm. gun rules, so I guess yeah. I didn't realize that's how it works. So, but he had checked it, checked it out, and checked it back in like a library yeah. book. Right. So he committed the murder, uh, allegedly. Still, he committed the murder uh, with his police gun. Yeah. You believe that, man? So these poor guys. I mean, it was just a um, just a jilted lover kind of thing. You've always said that, though, for years. Like, what happens when um, there's jealousy when it's two guys mm-hmm. in a relationship and how that's different than the jealousy that exists between a man and a woman? Yeah, I would think far more often it's physical. Physical. Yeah. It could get physical. you got two guys just, you know, fighting. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. And this It's been a long man. time since I've been in a fight with my gay lover, so <laughs> I don't. <laughs> True. I don't remember what happened. But the uh, the guy that allegedly killed the ex boyfriend apparently like tried to fake um, text messages by saying like I'm moving to Perth, even after mm-hmm. he knew that his ex boyfriend was dead and all that stuff. So, and you got to imagine he's a terrible cop. You think? Well, yeah. Because if I was going to commit a crime, you know, and it had something to do with radio. I would know enough about radio or I do know enough about radio to f- think about what they're going to look for, what, you know, what I can, what I need to cover up, what I need. I mean, he's going in there and uh, I guess, I guess it was a semi-automatic weapon because they found uh, what they describe it as a cartridge and a projectile where they did the ballistics. So that means he dropped an entire bullet and left it behind. Yeah. Not a spent casing, but a bullet, a whole bullet, careless. Yeah, it was definitely careless, but it was like a crime of passion. Yeah, but again, yeah, you get you get all jealous and you're not thinking straight. That's crazy. I get that way over you sometimes. Do you? I'm very possessive of you, Regan. Enough to kill. Yeah. If some, well, you could have. If me. somebody know. tried to take you away, yeah. yes. I don't know who you'd have to kill. Maybe my dog. <laughs> He's the only one who's got my heart. <laughs> no, I'm just mean. If somebody took you away from me, oh, I would. Uh, I would be up on both of y'all. If if Jody uh, cheated on you and kept it a secret, would you be mad enough to kill? No. No. Could, would kill her? Anybody? Him? Uh, no. Or her? No. Mm-mm. Hmm. Now that doesn't mean I wouldn't be mad enough to seek revenge. Yeah, well, <laughs> in that's other ways, but I wouldn't kill. I wouldn't kill. kill. No. Uh. Uh-uh. Well, unless she was messing around with a terrorist. <laughs> and it just you know, worked out. I mean, hell, if she's having a damn affair with old Osama bin Laden and I found out about it, I'd kill his ass. 
I mean, she's over there, you know, in the middle of the damn Kamas. <laughs> got her a boyfriend running around. <laughs> I wouldn't kill her, but I'd damn sure kill him. For but sure. I'd probably do that anyway. Yeah, for sure. But especially messing with a man's wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah, you just gotta you gotta look at the situation. <laughs> you see Jody going, uh, I have something to tell you. <laughs> I'm falling in love. <laughs> you haven't been paying enough attention to me. Take me for granted. Who is this jerk? <laughs> <laughs> we don't get to go on big vacations like we used to. So you remember when I took that girls trip to the Middle East? <laughs> <laughs> I met a man. <laughs> Tall and handsome. I was like, what? Yeah. He's moving over here. Coming right up through the Mexican border. And I'm going to meet him in Texas. We're going to get married. Give me his name. What's his name? <laughs> That's so funny. Ah. Uh, but you don't watch a lot of these crime shows like I do, do you? No, not at all. And then one thing that bothers me is that, um, you know, I've been doing that for a long, long time, way before it was popular. But it came became popular so much with women. Now it seems like I'm just sitting around doing woman things. Yeah. Watching these crime shows has become feminine. Yeah. But I was the first. Yeah, but you don't have a problem doing anything else that's considered feminine. You mean like sitting down to pee? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind that. Especially at night. Yeah, sure. But it is feminine. You're right. Mm-hmm. God. And hate, why is I it? hate that. Why is it feminine? Because women don't just find something that they like. They find something that they like, and they just are so thrilled with it because their emotions are always, you know, big. And they're big in a great way a lot of times, and sometimes they're not. And so you combine that with always needing to talk. So when one of them finds out about something that's, that's new, that's really, really enjoyable, She'll tell two friends, and then they'll tell two friends, and so forth and so on, so it gets out. Hey, this is what we do now. We watch crime shows. Yeah. Hey, girl, have you seen this one? Have you heard that podcast? Have you done that? And um, it just, you know, it just gets passed around until yeah. now. This is what women do. Well, I, that reminds me of on Saturday when Jody was describing the Scandaval situation. I've mm -hmm. never seen her more passionately talk about a topic in my life yeah and she's uh, you know leaning over the table and, and who's she explaining the scandal well, thing to she, jenny and michael she was explaining it to them and then i started when i saw what she was doing i started videoing it yeah and michael was sitting beside me and jody was completely turned to them and then she stopped talking and then he saw that i was trying to get a video and he, and he said kind of, yeah kind of, now jody explain that again who's yeah. what whenever so that was that was more being able to capture that was more him than me. Yeah, but the it way, was me. the way she was describing mm -hmm. it, like you talk about like sharing those things with other women. Yeah. Um it was crazy. Mm-hmm. Um He's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then she goes, I didn't say he was a piece of shit. I said he's a shit. He's a shit. Like he's a little shit. Is that like, was that than, different? Yeah, I mean, I guess. You know, whatever. <laughs> I didn't call him a piece of shit. I said, he's a shit. And you said there were a lot of people that viewed that? It was the most popular video of the day. Huh. God, I ain't telling her that. Yeah. Well, it's like the women love to hear it. Yeah. I didn't see any guys commenting underneath like, oh, this is a great, uh, <laughs> perfect recap of the situation. You know what You know what else women love to hear? When you bring my beer, brush my hair. <laughs> don't that. you ladies yeah <laughs> drop a comment below if if you love that i know you do <laughs> um there's another story that um that we have to discuss because it's just so ridiculous um 
And I, and I also think it's funny. So we'll, we'll do that next. More of TJ's podcast is coming up. Your New Year's resolution is in full swing and you are trying to lose weight. Help yourself with Calitrin. Calitrin is the safe, effective way to lose weight. When you buy three months supply right now, you'll get three months free. It's scientifically proven to help you lose weight. Order it now at acetj.com slash weight loss. Calitrin. The Ace at Large podcast is brought to you by Gaston County, North Carolina. Find out all fun things to do in Gaston County, including all the events and unique shopping it has to offer at acetj.com slash Gaston. That's acetj.com slash Gaston. Top of every hour, you get caught up on the hottest trending topics in the world, thanks to Riggins and Now Trending, sponsored by Culver's. The freshest ingredients all day, every day. Make it your new neighborhood spot. Short waits for the freshest food in town. Find details at acetj.com slash Culver's. Currents is Lake Norman's number one lifestyle magazine. Every month, Currents brings you the latest news on what's happening in the Lake Norman area. They've been serving the Lake Norman community for over 13 years. See the latest issue of Currents now at lncurrents.com. The Week in Review is sponsored by Hyatt-centric Charlotte South Park, beautiful rooms, and incredible dining options. Book now by calling 980-299-7123. It's the Hyatt-centric Charlotte South Park. Get your home secured for less than a dollar a day with no installation or equipment charges and a lifetime equipment replacement warranty. You can get security for your home. 800-915-8941. 800-915-8941. The Extra Funny Podcast is brought to you by Neogenics. Neogenics is the most trusted stem cell clinic in the Carolinas. Heal joint pain naturally by medical doctors with no surgery, no downtime, and no medications. Find out more at acetj.com slash neogenics. As a proven leader in managed IT services, CompuCom delivers innovative solutions designed for how you work today. They'll help you deliver results no matter where you are on your digital transformation journey. It's all at CompuCom. Go to CompuCom.com to find out more.